am so excited you're here today because I'll be talking about all the books I read in January and you guys know I read a lot of books in January. I didn't think I was. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, tone it down a little this year, okay? And then I was like, no, I'm gonna read almost 30 freaking books. I think I ended up with 26 books I read. Uh, and for um, <laughs> vlog wise, I only managed two vlogs. I did have like a winter horror thriller vlog plan that did not happen. So there's a lot of like winter thrillers here um, and just winter horror in general uh, at the first half of the month. Uh, and yeah, let's just get right into it because it is a lot. Uh, starting off with Maynard's House. Um, I did enjoy this one a lot. Actually, I think this was a great way to start the year off. And this is on my 24 and 24. It is a paperback from hell. Um, I think it was published in 1980. Uh, and it is about a man, um, a man who is, um, left a cabin in remote Maine, um, by a friend during Vietnam. And sadly his friend died during Vietnam and left him this house. So he's going, uh, during winter, um, which is a very, very harsh winter. And, uh, yeah, it's just him in, in the cabin. There's some humor in this that was really fun. I've seen a lot of people say this is a slow burn and I get that, but it's honestly a very short book. It's like, I think it's 240 pages. The audio went very fast. I listened to it on Everand uh, and I really liked it. There is some questionable stuff in this. <laughs> <laughs> that I was that took me out of it I was like why would you ever put this in your book um it was just very bizarre and he keeps heading at it too he's like I know this is wrong to even think about or say and stuff and I'm like dude why are you still on it then like <laughs> hello uh but yeah what this ended up being was one of my favorite things um at the end it is kind of trippy and weird uh and yeah very interesting uh the timing of this book when it came out very much reminds me of a Stephen King book um and I cannot even say it because it's like a huge 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 spoiler um for a king book but yeah I was like I'm lying Stephen King here like dude did you steal this uh but yeah I really liked it it is a, a very super I would say this is more supernatural story um there's like a witch ghost I'm like doing quotes I'm like there's a witch ghost uh but <laughs> I'd say it's supernatural like a little bit of folklore in there uh but yeah definitely a great winter horror read and this was actually Kelsey from Simon Slasher's book club pick for January and what a way to start off the year. I gave this one four stars. And the next book I ended up reading was a winter thriller called Shiver by Allison. Oh, Allie Renfield, <laughs> Reynolds <laughs> names. Uh, this is a very quick pace uh, thriller about um, snowboarders. Well, they're in present time, they're not snowboarding anymore, but they used to snowboard back in the day, like for the Olympics or trials and stuff. And um, they're all gathered, they're all told to go to this one place. It's very isolated and they're stuck up there. Um, and it's like a ski, a ski place and it's like um, closed because the weather is so bad and all their phones end up missing. And like, it is a very twisty, turny thriller. It's like, uh, then now then now but not a lot like it, i didn't feel like it was jarring usually that annoys me um i will say the snowboarding stuff at the beginning i was like why do i care <laughs> i do not care about snowboarding um it's i know it's hard i've attempted to snowboard before as a child and i was like not into it i i I honestly was like, give me skis, please, because that is much easier. Um, but yeah, I did like the isolated setting. I liked the main character, too, because, you know, I like a shady, a shady POV. Uh, and yeah, I ended up giving it three stars. It was very enjoyable. And then I ended up reading The Widow of Pale Harbor by Hester Fox. Um, I ended up reading this for my friend Elizabeth's uh, book club. I will link all the information down below for her book club. That is just uh, a 
gothic reads. Uh, and this is a gothic romance that is kind of Poe inspired. There's a lot of Poe uh, references in this one. Um, I wish it tied together a little bit better with the Poe stuff uh, and the romance in it. I was just like, you know me in romance, it doesn't usually work for me. Uh, so I was kind of zoning out during those, but I will say like the gothic vibes were there. Like it, there's, it's very cold and um, everybody thinks this widow is a witch. So there's a bit of like a witch hunt uh, aspect of it. Uh, and yeah, I did enjoy it and I gave it three stars. And the next book I ended up reading was Gassed by Kaylin Patrick Burke. Um, I read this um, while I was waiting at the dentist. One of, I think the first time I ended up at the dentist this month. Uh, and I read almost all, this whole book because it's a novella, it's 100 pages on Everrand. I read it on my phone. And it is about a hotel who, uh, a hotel that it might be shutting down. And this dude who's just been in this town, he's just sick of it and he puts in his notice. It's like a very dramatic, um, melodramatic uh, time. <laughs> for this main character and but you know what he's he's getting out oh but before he leaves he's got to finish his shift and also there's a bus of old people coming into this hotel and something's not right with the old people first of all one of them's freaking dead when they show up so yeah this was a fun one I had a lot of fun it is cosmic as you can tell from the cover um it was very like um invasion of the body snatchers esque I was like oh yeah I love it uh it was a fun time uh and I gave it four stars and you guys know I read Mimi's Tales of Tara Jonjito's newest collection um I was so excited for this I read it like immediately when I borrowed it from the library uh okay I feel for Mimi. I do. I feel very bad for Mimi because these all, they center around her. All this horrible stuff is happening to her uh, and it's kind of hilarious though. <laughs> like there's, um, uh, <laughs> there, the first story in this is literally seeing a creepy woman on a telephone pole and I was like, yeah, that would unnerve me. <laughs> and then it just escalates. It just it keeps escalating and escalating for poor, poor Mimi. Um, I would say one of my favorite stories, I think it's just, it's called Just the Two of Us. Yeah, Just the Two of Us and the woman next door was so bizarre and freaky. Um, and I honestly think I had like a nightmare about that one for some reason, like an anxiety dream. Uh, but yeah, I gave it five stars. You guys know I love Junji Ito. And then I ended up reading None of This is True by Lisa Drool. And I I listened to this book in one day. I was very surprised uh, by how much I liked this because I DNF'd uh, Invisible Girl by this author. <laughs> um, I was like not into that. There's a POV in that that I was just like, no, no thanks. And uh, my loan was about to expire for this one and I know it's a really long wait, uh, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, it is about two women who meet who are birthday twins and one of the women, um, it works for like, uh, she writes articles or does like a podcasting thing. Um, and she was like, oh, let me meet, like, let me get to know this birthday twin and just see like what, where the differences are because they were the same age and they have the same birthday um and then she starts to find out some stuff about her family and um this woman kind of convinces this woman that she's in a, a abusive relationship but uh that's just the tip of the iceberg with this one this one's very psychological and there is a lot of twists and turns all the way up to the ending there is another twist at the very very end and i absolutely love those type of thrillers so I had a blast with this one I will say the main character that we do follow is um annoying <laughs> at times I'm like oh my gosh you're so annoying and also like the husband and this is just like I don't know if he's just really British I think that's it I think he's just really British and I was like Oh my gosh, how annoying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I ended up giving this one four stars. It is a blast of a thriller if you like psychological uh, thriller. Another thriller I ended up listening to that was actually, honestly like a surprise for me uh, is uh, The Overnight Guest by Heather 
Guden, I forget the last name, uh, Gudenkoff. Uh, and this is another very twisty um, thriller, but I would say this one's a little bit more zany. <laughs> a little bit more out there um this ends up being more of like a darker um I don't want to give it away what it ends up being but it's very very dark um so there are like present now um chapters and uh the now we follow a woman who is a writer and she's in this cabin and it's like a big blizzard and she notices there was a car accident um outside of her house so she goes to try to save um the people in the car accident it ends up being a little boy and a woman and they're pretty um they're pretty aggressive not aggressive but they're like not telling her anything and she's like I need to know stuff um I do realize that this is <laughs> a really out there um kind of thriller but i really enjoyed it i liked the atmosphere and i liked how dark it got and there's like a mystery aspect to the past stuff and i was like oh my gosh this is very very dark um and i enjoyed it uh so i ended up giving it 4.5 stars and i'll round up to five on goodread and then we have to talk about the richard layman book dark mountain okay um ugh, okay Oh, uh, well, this is part of the year of Layman that is hosted by my friend Christine from Secret Streets and Kelsey from Slime and Slashers. It is the year of rumps, and um, my first my first rump read was not great. Uh, <laughs> I gave this one star. It is literally, um, I think um, Amy counted. It was like almost eighty breast the word breast we mentioned 80 times rumps were like 30 or something I was just like oh my gosh uh yeah that was a whole book uh it's about a family going camping and like these people falling in love whatever but there is a witch and they end up being cursed uh by this witch and literally the climax of this book there is a scene in it where a little boy is like should I grab this witch's boob and I'm like no, like, no. Ah! Oh, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, one star. So we got two one stars for Richard Lehman and one four star. So next month we'll see. We'll see where I land. How how's it going? I know Amy's told me she's out. <laughs> she's out. <laughs> out of out of the year rough so far right now <laughs> and speaking of my friend amy uh from amy noel reads uh her book club pick for the dark hearts book club was broken places by blaine daigle uh this is i would say this is supernatural uh horror a little bit of folk horror going on here i was very nervous about this book um like a quarter way in i was like uh oh how are we gonna handle this situation because it does talk about like native american folklore stuff and i was like oh gosh don't don't do um a stolen tongue situation here please uh but it doesn't there's a bit of a twist in it where i was like okay okay i can finish this book that's great um i will say this book um it didn't have like the payoff I really wanted uh, for the setup that it gave, but I really liked, as you could tell from this cover, there's a crazy deer in this. I really liked the crazy deer stuff that happened in it. Uh, and like, there's other creepy stuff that happened. I really liked all the little creepy stuff, uh, but yeah, I just wanted a, a different payoff in the end. Uh, but it was a short listen on Everrand, and I think it was like snowing when I listened to it and I was just crocheting and it was just like, a fun time uh, so I ended up giving it three stars and I ended up reading this wretched valley by Jennifer Kiefer this is a debut new horror book uh, that I feel like I've seen everywhere recently and uh, this is I would say it's like survival horror supernatural horror um, about um, the stupidest people on earth no <laughs> this is about a group of climbers that are literally like I think it, it starts off um, well it starts off explaining what has been found in this area um, and I won't give that away even though it's right at the beginning it is such a great opening I was like hooked uh, this is uh, based off of the Dilatov Pass uh, the Russian thing with the uh, hikers that happened I don't even know when that happened 
like the 60s. Um, I might be all wrong, but it is like kind of an explanation of like that, like very reminiscent. But it's in Kentucky um, mountains area. And okay, so the, it's these um, people looking for climbing areas. I, I just am not, I've never heard of this ever happening. Um, so they are um, influencers. I think there's like an influ, there's influencers there and they're looking for new climbing situations and you know help the local economy and stuff i don't i i didn't get it uh, but basically they end up trying to explore um a new cave system or not a cave it's not a cave just climbing in general and of course everything that goes wrong could go wrong also one of them brings their dog which i kind of ran out about in my new horror vlog at the beginning i was just like are you kidding me right now? You're gonna bring your dog into a, a ridiculously stupid situation in the first place. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not a dog owner, but I love dogs and I don't want to see them in a bad situation like that. And you know what? I'm gonna spoil it right now. It does not end well for the dog. Like, <laughs> I was just like, are you freaking kidding me right now? Ah. Um, but yeah, um, what this does end up doing I did like but it's very repetitive it's very repetitive uh but you know kudos to this author this is a this is a big um I feel like this is a really good start uh and you know a fun story uh yeah, where it, where it goes, it's pretty gnarly. There's some gnarly stuff that happens in this one. But again, I could not get over how dumb these people were. <laughs> so I ended up giving it three stars. And then for Winterween, I ended up reading uh, Be Careful What You Wish For for purple color. Um, I had a blast with this one. I love the ending of this. I was just like, Stein, this is dark, uh, four stars. And then I ended up reading um, a short story collection, uh, Petite Mort. Uh, this is a splatterpunk extreme horror uh, collection of stories in this. And I, I read this in one sitting. I like could not put it down. I was hooked. Also this cover, amazing. Could do it for, I, I might have read this for uh, Winterween. I don't really remember. Um, Okay, so I'm trying to find a list of the stories. Where are the stories? I think I wrote it in my review. Santa's Package was a good one. Um, the first story, Grinder, was really good. It was had such a great, like, hook. Um, oh, there was some good one. Um, I would say Horrorgasm was my least favorite. I felt like it was a little too long for stuff that happened. Um, oh, there's just some good ones in here. Magic Brew I really liked. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite um, horror collections. And I actually haven't read an extreme horror collection before. But this is one of my absolute favorites. I had a blast with it other than, you know, that one I, I think was a little too long. Uh, but yeah, I ended up giving it four stars. And highly recommend uh, checking this one out if you're looking for something to just fly through and laugh and be grossed out. Definitely check out Petite Mort. I read Aberat by Christopher Golden. Um, this is a winter horror. Uh, this is about the arc uh, like Noah's Ark being discovered on top of a mountain. Um, and the only reason why I did not DNF this book is because what happens when they get there, they're like, well, first of all, there's a whole mystery. Like if this is, really is Noah's Ark or whatever, uh, why is it on top of a mountain? Like that it doesn't make any sense. But there they find like this um, mummified demon situation <laughs> and I was like okay you got me hooked on this so um I I I liked I liked where it went but it was very boring and then you also have those um the conversations of like religion and stuff in it that I wasn't a huge fan of uh but I ended up giving it 2.5 stars it was a really easy listen and it had me hooked because of the whole demon thing and a great winter read demon winter read <laughs> but yeah I gave it 2.5 stars I'll probably round up to three on goodreads it was just like something really easy to listen to 
And then I ended up reading I'm Not Done With You Yet by Jesse Q. Santano. I read this for the Pyramid Book Club, which is hosted by Lexi from Books with Lexi and Michelle from Michelle's Library and Monica from A Little Bit of Monica. I did miss the live show, but I went back and watched it. Uh, so I watched Saltburn um, in January, at the beginning of January, and I absolutely loved it. I watched it twice since then. <laughs> since then okay um this has saltburn vibes um maybe not to the extent uh of that but it is a, a tale a thriller about obsession it takes place at oxford like in the past um and yeah it was it was interesting where this one went i i saw the twist coming but it was still a fun one uh and i ended up giving it four stars and last month i ended up doing a vlog of reading new horror vlog um, and I ended up reading A Haunting in the Yardic by CJ Cook and I absolutely loved this book. I gave it five stars. It's a supernatural uh, book, isolated setting. Um, it has all of the things. It has a past timeline, present timeline, uh, and where this one went is honestly one of my favorite endings too so if you read if you read this one and you read Maydard's house you'll probably be like okay uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah I really liked it um there is um I would say a lot of content uh warnings in this one especially for the past timeline so definitely look up uh content warnings uh it's very very sad and tragic and dark um but yeah it was it was good it was scary um and I gave it five stars and I think it comes out I forget, February, sometime in February. <laughs> also for that vlog, I read Midnight in Beacon Street by Emily Ruth Ferrana. Uh, and this also is a debut. Um, this is a short little thriller. It has 90s vibes. It takes place in 1992, I believe. And it's about a babysitter babysitting these kids who have gone through it already. They have some trauma. And we keep getting um, also other flashbacks with the babysitter herself um so yeah it has those 90s vibes the main character is obsessed with slashers which we know that's kind of like the height of um some awesome slashers uh <laughs> and yeah it was fun um I wanted something else I wanted um it to kind of go get a little bit you know messier but um i ended up giving it three stars it's a quick little read i think it's under 200 pages and yeah the cover is magnificent as well so definitely worth checking out also for that uh, vlog i read my throat and open grave by uh, tori Bol bolvolino uh and this is a ya dark fantasy it is those labyrinth vibes in it uh but it's very very dark um <laughs> i would say it's very dark for a ya where it goes there is a romance in it that was just like i'm checking out uh so i ended up giving it three stars i think if you're a fan of labyrinth i think you'll like this one i ended that vlog reading ein hollow by tim Vic Gregor. Uh, this was one of my favorite reads this month as well. I absolutely loved this uh, Frankenstein retelling. We get a POV of a woman living on an island in Hollow in 1700s. And you know what? It's not great for women back then. Um, it wasn't great for women back then. And I think that's where a lot of the horror of this book comes in. It's not necessarily Dr. Frankenstein moving to the island. I mean, he brings his own his own horror for sure but I think just this main character like the horror of like having so many kids to feed and like being poor and cold and like isolated and like you only have one friend and oh my gosh like I couldn't imagine that is horrifying to me uh so I think Tim McGregor really captured the, like, the horror of womanhood in this uh and yeah then we get like the monster stuff uh which I really liked I will say um me keeping this back uh keeping me from giving this five stars is the fact that it the last 40 pages or so I didn't need where the climax happened I was just like you know what I'm good I can check out now and I will give this five stars but I think uh, everyone else would love love the last 40 pages or so um, I mean I didn't hate it I was just like oh man if it ended right here that'd be great for me uh, but yeah um, I ended up giving this 4.5 I think I ended up rounding up to 5 on Goodreads but definitely worth checking out if you like Frankenstein and then I ended up reading Girls Night Out by Wendy Darripple this was part of my Ouija uh, 
game TBR and this was the only book I got to <laughs> from that uh, but I gave this one five stars too it was really fun uh, this is about a woman that gets to go out um, for her bridal um, I forget what they're called I want to say a hen's, a hen's night or whatever but that is like the British German term <laughs> I think because I just, I listened to a, something else about that anyways, stuck in my head, but you know what I mean. Um, and um, she meets this dude and things, um, things take a turn and you know, she might um, have, she has the urge to eat raw meat. Let's just say that. Um, I thought this was great. It was fun. And I really like the ending of this one. I was like, yeah, this is an amazing ending it's very empowering and um focus too i like the focus it, uh, where it went uh so i gave it five stars i highly recommend um wendy dar ripple books if you're looking for something short and unique uh they're all a lot of fun next book i ended up reading was uh as hey cosby's do book all the sinners bleed uh this is a crime thriller and it is the darkest book i think he's come out with yet um where this one goes is absolutely horrifying it's horrifying um i think this is the most horror book too that he's read or written and um the writing was absolutely magnificent like ah, this writing's so good and uh he just uh, captures, um, like, the social commentary aspect of, uh, of, and, like, can translate it so well, and oh, I absolutely loved it, and you guys know I'm not being biased this time, because it is just so, so good. This doesn't even take place really in Richmond. They only got to Richmond a couple times, so, um, you guys know I'm not being biased, but I absolutely loved it. It is about, um, a sheriff in a small town where they end up finding um some horrible stuff um there is i would look up content warnings for this one this one's very very dark it starts off with a school shooting uh just to kind of set the stage for how dark this is uh and it just it spirals it is like a mystery um you have this sheriff who used to be with the fbi so he has like a dark past and um the family in this too is just uh really relatable i feel like and you can con connect to these characters Ugh, magnificent <laughs> it's so so good highly recommend and I read Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. Uh, this is huge. Uh, this is a, I would say this is a gothic book, but um, in my reset vlog, I did read this and I'm like, I wish the gothic parts were a little bit more in this book and like the present day modern stuff was a little less. Um, and I just wanted more stuff from that uh but yeah it was interesting um I liked the I did like the present day timeline because it is around like the horror movie uh what is it called community I guess or like that like they're making a horror movie um and I did like all of that stuff like having an ex scream queen come on and be a part of it um uh, it was really interesting and there's also like some relationship stuff in this some romance that I actually liked uh and wasn't bored with uh but overall I do think it's a little it's a little long like <laughs> it's a long book uh and I just wanted more of those Victorian gothic vibes uh and I ended up giving it three and a half stars and then I read Holly speaking of big books this isn't a huge book for a king book uh but it was long and it was boring uh we follow holly um king's favorite character he made since mr mercedes she's shown up in the outsider and if it bleeds which i really like if it bleeds and i really like the outsider um <laughs> no comment on mr mercedes uh but yeah so we're following holly i like holly too i do like holly i don't like all of the detail king includes in this i just didn't need it also the villains in this were super lame i think they were the lamest of the lame interesting but really lame uh and you know immediately what these people are doing and it's like 
boring. I don't know. <laughs> it's incredibly bored. Um, I will say like a lot of this book focuses on Holly losing her mom to COVID um, and her mom also being like a, a denier of ax didn't anti-vax person um and then dying from it i think it's her coming to terms with that and like um i do think the covid stuff is important in this because of holly holly is like ocd <laughs> um of course covid would be a giant deal for her uh and yeah two stars i just could not get in it i did finish it but honest there's a line in this and I said this in my vlog Holly it's like I've never been so scared I'm like girl you literally in the outsider and if it bleeds came up against a supernatural creature that you could not explain and you defeated it so why are you scared <laughs> about these like I don't get it also in that vlog I read the narrative of author a pen by Edgar Allan Poe um I really like the beginning of this. I like how it starts. I like the middle. It kind of lost me at the end. Um, I started to zone out a bit listening to it. Uh, so I ended up giving it three stars. And then The Night Stalkers by Christopher Triana and Ryan Harding. Uh, this is about a satanic um, <laughs> grocery store that wants to kill everybody at the not satanic grocery store. I honestly read this book because, well, it's on KU right now, and I wanted it to be really metal, and I feel like I never got those moments. Like, there's references to bands and stuff and music, but I never got, like, the metal part, you know? I feel like it's just your average kind of extreme horror book, splatter punk book, um, lots of dicing and slicing and sex stuff in this, but nothing like metal. I needed like a full montage. Like that's what I needed in this. Uh, but I ended up giving it to like three stars. And then the last two books I ended up reading, I uh, read this book all month, Cat Magic by Whitley Stryber. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. It was so boring. It's very boring. It had a great in intro. Um, this book is about like witches fighting with people or like themselves too and this girl that kind of gets caught in the middle of it. Um, is there a giant cat in New Jersey? No. Does this dude turn into a cat? Yes. But he's not. I feel like there's not a lot of scenes with that. Um, so the, um, it does say the author's forward in this is, this is communion, but done in this format. He didn't quite know what communion was yet in his head. He just had these ideas kind of bouncing around. Um, and I, I did see that through it because there was a lot of like pettiness and like unexplained stuff in it um and the ending is literally one of those endings where it's like and he was never seen again i was like whitley i only finished this so i can name one of the foster cats in january in catterary that uh my friend andrew hosted on uh <laughs> on discord patreon you know two two stars one star i don't know maybe one star at this point because I'm trying to think of something I liked in it and there is just not there. It's just not there. And I ended the month with Mosaic by Katherine McCarthy. This was my book club pick for the Reaper book club. So I'm not really going to talk about it. I will link the live show where I talked about it for a while with Amy who co-hosted with me. Um, and yeah, this is Cosmic Horror, Folk Horror book. Uh, very, very short and I think an interesting way to start the year off. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. Those were all the books I read in January. Let me know if you've read any of these books uh, down below uh, and check out my pinned comment because I will pin um, some of my favorite movies that I watched in January uh, that I kind of just want to share with the world because one of them honestly made me like love movies again. <laughs> uh, so I hope you guys have a fantastic day and bye!